Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we're going to talk about something that was surprising to me. I, a couple of days ago, was thinking in the shower about what kind of videos I could do to kind of change the trajectory, the downward trajectory of the channel. And one of the things I thought of was, of course, like, you know, people like lists of things. And I was like, okay, well, what kind of lists? most popular SCPs has been done, done and done again, uh, might actually do something along those lines at some point. But you know what would be interesting is what are the most popular SCP characters, not SCPs? And then I was like, oh, of course, you know, Dr. Bright's first, and then maybe it's Gears and Clef for second, and then who goes down on the list after that? Basically, it was basically, it, it was, the impetus for this video was the question, Who's the third most popular? Because I felt like I knew who was going to be first and second. And as it turns out, I was wrong. Now, when we talk about popularity, I'm not talking about like who talks about them the most or who has the most memes made about them. I'm talking about on the wiki. And I think this is a very strong reflection of someone's of a character's popularity. How many articles contain that character? And this is actually easy to determine because the SCP wiki has tags for characters, especially commonly and well used ones. Um, so you can look up care. You can look up articles by tags and then just count the articles. So I did that for every uh, character on the SCP wiki, actually, that has a character tag, uh, which requires at least five articles, I believe, by three authors, although they may be restricting that or changing that. So it's just five articles at this point. This is something that I looked into and I, I did the it took about 50 minutes, but I did some manual work and eventually I got a I got a solid ranking down and I was very surprised. And I think you'll be surprised as well as to who's number one, but we're going to start at number 10 and I will be clear here, even though I filtered by character tags, I removed uh, the ones that were purely SCPs, specifically uh in this listing, since we're only doing a top 10, the only ones that were removed were uh, Abel and uh, the Hard to Kill Reptile, uh, both of which are primarily SCPs. And this is not an SCP list. This is a character list. Yes, they can be characters, but it's not quite what I was going for for this list. And we may do a top SCPs thing later, but for now, that's not what we're doing. So who's number 10? We'll do this in the uh, announcery voice, right? Number 10. Number 10 is Datto and Dr. Sumerian. How's that pot? The tide. <laughs> They're not related to each other. <laughs> They're just tied. Um, both the doc care. And I say this is, you know, I'm Dr. Sumerian. The character on the wiki, Dr. Sumerian, uh, has 52 articles. And so does Datto. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover... Uh, well, we're going to cover Dr. Sumerian first. Why not? Dr. Sumerian was first written in, it looks like October of 2014. So about two-ish months after I first started writing for the wiki. If you look at the earliest article he features in, it's SCP-978's extended test logs, but that's just because he was edited in later. So technically that doesn't count. He, he's not... He didn't originate in 2009. He originated in 2014. Um, and he's sort of in the middle of ground between everything because all of the rest were written first in 2008. And the and Dado and the ninth rank were all written in uh, 29, or 2018. Uh, so there's two really new ones. One old one and then <laughs> eight really, really old ones. <laughs> And my character is the old one. It's the one in the middle, 2014. I wrote... The funny thing is, is Dr. Sumerian was not originally supposed to be the author avatar character I was uh, writing for the wiki. The very first character that I wrote that was really sort of a authorial, almost an authorial insert. They're, none of them really are, but uh, for me, the closest was probably Philip Foster, who was in the very first or second tale I wrote. And uh, yeah, he was supposed to be my representation on the wiki. And then I wrote a Dr. Sumerian into who I, at that point, I think I'd already decided he was going to be on the ethics committee, which made me think to hit myself that he was going to be into the arts 
and that was going to be where some some of his education was in the arts and then uh i needed a character to notice the names of the and at the time i thought of the foundation as a very sciencey sort of thing but i needed a character who would notice that these were god names from some esoteric group that most people wouldn't recognize and dr samarian was that thing and then i then there were other tales that got written uh the the third tale featuring the character was written by somebody who wasn't me uh and then uh he shows up in one of my most popular early tales called technicolor geography by the way they're not all going to be this detailed this one's particularly detailed because i I wrote it Um, (laughs) so there's that what we come down to here though is that as a character dr sumerian very much became you know the me of the scp wiki he's not an author insert because he's very different from me as a character dr sumerian and just as an example and this is like that's not a character trait but it kind of is um i'm a teetotaler i don't drink alcohol at all don't no drugs nothing right uh sumerian on the other hand is a alcoholic who (laughs) has tried every drug under the sun and uh dr sumerian went to college i didn't do that either He's a different person entirely. Uh, And he's been developed as well. It's important to note that a lot of recent characters are all written by the same authors. Whereas Sumerian is most, well, not even mostly, I think. I think about 30 to 40% of the tales and SCPs that feature Dr. Sumerian were written by me. But that leaves 70 to 60% that are written by other people. And that's important for creating a character that actually works on the SCP wiki. Having it be written by people who aren't you, because if you, it's only you, that's great, and you're you know that's one thing. Once it begins being written by other people, then I feel as though you finally arrived at having a character that can be used. Uh, but then we move on to Datto, and Datto is ridiculous. Uh, the original author of Datto is uh, uh, DJ Cactus, and it's from the silliest article weirdly as he's been developed later on as to be a completely silly and ridiculous individual a uh, dado was being contracted to kill a person in the first article he, er- he appears in and i believe he <laughs> succeeds at that or at least the method by which he decides he's going to kill somebody is going to kill him he's going to radio poison the radio- radioactivity of all of the bananas not not all of the bananas, but a lot. And DJ, I mean, he, DJ Cat has wrote this amazingly funny, really fun article, uh, and and it just sort of grew from there because it's a you know, the, and the titles of the SCPs are great too. Forced banana equivalent dose by Dado. Waste management by Dado. Youth in Asia, as in the youth in Asia, by Dado. Tan and laundry by Dado hair growth by dado and it's basically just hey what if something was really really powerful and really and actually maybe even really really smart but also constantly got your uh, got your order wrong then <laughs> just rolls from there and it is just an amazing uh piece the very first one was written in the beginning of 2018 so it's not even three years old um actually it's more than three years old math uh and it's been written 50 so he's you know in four less year in four less years he's actually gotten to the same point that sumerians in. so i would argue he's probably more popular at this point he'll and they'll be content there will always be dados <laughs> there will always be dado articles because it's fun uh and it's not just written by C- C- dj cactus dj cactus writes a few of these but not all of them and that's our number 10 slot shared between me and dado yeah that's a thing me it's not me i'll put it that way the character dodgers wearing and me are not the same person but it's complicated when you that's the online moniker which which you uh, go by but now we're going to move on to number nine another relatively new one uh that is Phelan wilson of wilson's wildlife now I am not as familiar with Fail and Wilson as some of the other uh, characters on this list, but I can tell you that the driving force behind Fail and Wilson 
uh, is a writer called Uncle Nicolini, who is one of the more prolific writers on the SCP Wiki. He's in the top 10 of prolific writers. So I think he might even be top five at this point. Um, and he began the writing of these of this particular character. And um, I think even I wrote, yep, as part of, yep. So there's an SCP called this, but I can only talk about, I, or not only, but I can talk about the stuff that, that I know about. The Life and Times of Chairman Meow and the Wu-Tang Clan. So Wilson Wildlife is a goi that handles anomalous animals and uh yeah so when i wrote an art i believe this was a i think this might have been either a challenge or a christmas gift seems it was posted at the wrong time of the year for it to be a christmas gift so i don't know for sure um there's a gift exchange on the wiki and i know i was asked to write an article that involved Fayette and wilson so i did and that's the life and times of Chairman Meow and the Woof Tang Clan, uh, which is about a talking cat and dog. And uh, I included a mention of Wilson's wildlife and eventually Fayo and Wilson as well, um, just to basically include that character. Uh, and it worked into the narrative because we're talking about anomalous animals. Let me put it this way. I wrote an article about anomalous animals because I knew that I could include Fayo and Wilson and Wilson wildlife. Let's put it that way. I don't know a lot about Fayo and Wilson. We'll put it that way. Next up is Dr. Kondraki. Dr. Kondraki is originated from Dr. Kondraki. Um, it says here that the first article including him is Iceberg Seven's article. Um, and then like half a month later, a couple weeks later, Kondraki and Clef wrote Incident 239B, Clef Kondraki. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Kondraki is a very old character that doesn't see a lot of use anymore. Now, when the uh, bottle dick uh, cannon was a thing, it <laughs> there's no real way to talk about it in a way that doesn't. When that was a thing, they uh, resurrected Kondraki a little bit. He showed up in some resurrection stuff i believe and additionally i've written him into a couple of my own articles or not articles but tales uh, as well specifically in the old west canon that i created um and dr kodraki dies and gets kind of kicked out as sort of a symbolic that's the best way to put this and we're talking about these only as characters by the way the people who are behind them i'll tell you who's behind them but i'm not gonna talk about dr kodraki the person uh, if I do, we would get this would get way too long and way too controversial uh, for a lot of these characters. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll talk about the characters because once you write it for the wiki, and as you can, as I can, you can see, as I can see here, like Kondraki only wrote like three of these tales, and there are sixty. So like, this belonged to Kondraki, the person. He's a character of his own. Um, but Kondraki was sort of killed off in symbolic ways in a way that kind of reflected the scp wiki's departure from the all-powerful doctors doing whatever the fuck they want tropes that uh kind of governed the early parts of the scp foundation's writing um after duke basically in a lot of canonical representations uh Kondraki is dead after duke till dawn when he does this thing where he decides he's going to ride scp 682 out of the uh <laughs> out of the site basically <laughs> when dr kondraki decides he's going to ride scp 682 and uses a, a containment breach that kills a bunch of people as an excuse to do it that's sort of the end of dr kondraki it's it's played for laughs there's lots of jokes involved in that article but also that is the last time in a most canonical representations of the character that he shows up uh there are future again resurrection and um <clears throat> Uh, both Resurrection and the D Dick in a Bottle uh, canons do involve future stuff involving Kondraki, and there are other tales that involve him, but in a sort of general canonical sense, like, there's a general canon on the wiki, if that makes any sense. Uh, Kondraki is dead. Like, for most people. And now, number seven, Dr. Light. 
who I am less familiar with. The funny thing is, Dr. Light, whilst originating in 2008, did not originate with Sophia Light, the person who eventually it's sort of based around. Um, it's in 19, it, or I believe she shows up. I'm not actually 100% sure that this is, she was in the original, but she's definitely in SCP-166's rewritten version. And she's in uh, quite a few other, uh, or, well, not quite a few, just a few other early articles <clears throat> where Dr. Light comes into her own is this sort of a core character in the resurrection canon which is a lot of articles and also influenced a lot of articles that other people wrote later um she is basically in charge of the project if memory serves and uh that has led to the reason why she has 64 articles uh written uh about her so we're gonna move on and again all of these are uh originated in 2008 by the way yeah, Kane Pathos Crow, who, despite the name, is actually a dog. Uh, I actually quite like uh, the character of Kane Pathos Crow as a very hyper competent dog doctor, uh, but it does show a little bit of the ridiculousness of the early SCP Foundation, just on the edges. Like, not that this wouldn't happen now. I'm sure that people would come up with this kind of stuff now, but also. That's a little ridiculous. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, but that's our number six pick right here. You would think a, a sentient talking uh, dog, considering how people on the internet tend to uh, uh, talk to be like huge fans of animals, would be you know more what's the word I'm looking for uh, popular than this. But eh, here we are. Ah, yes, this one was one that I had some difficulties. Deciding if I was going to include or not, first of all. And second of all, this one has an arguable, or not arguable, but an, um, actually yes, arguable core origination. So, number five is the Scarlet King. And I say the Scarlet King starts, or the Scarlet King originates in 2008 because SCP-231 is the original article where the Scarlet King comes out of. Um, but he's not technically a character in it. So if you look at the list of articles that involve the Scarlet King in some way, enough to, by the way, in order to be tagged with a character tag, the character needs to be more than just like an offhand mention. You can't just say the word Dr. Sumerian, for example, and then be like, all right, let's tag it Dr. Sumerian. The character needs to be present and needs to participate in some way in the story. So officially he's not tagged on SCP-231, but he shows up in 231. However, I don't see any other articles featuring the Scarlet King until 2012, after that. So whilst he originated back then, he is his current incarnation and understandings of him are somewhat newer than the other characters on this. Well, not all the other characters on this, but the more new, or I should say more of the original characters on this list. Still old, but not quite as old. And <clears throat> honestly... Despite the fact that 231, I believe, is Clef's baby. Uh, <laughs> um, Dejoric is really the one who drove early writings on the Scarlet King outside of 231. And, uh, I mean, other characters picked it up. You've got Cactus on here. You've got Deadly Moose, Twisted Gears, Dejoric, Dejoric again, and so on. In more recent years, you see people like Uranium Empire who have written on this topic, and, and you keep going, and you'll find more and more characters. Or I should say more and more writers writing this character. Um, I don't think we need to talk too much about who the Scarlet King is, because I think we all know this. And again, this was questionable to me, because this is technically an SCP. But he's not assigned an SCP number. 231 is not the Scarlet King. So I decided to go ahead and leave him in as a character. Um <clears throat> I think there's a little bit of a nebulousness between the Scarlet King and, and another one on this list that we're about to get to. But for the moment, yeah, Scarlet King, number five, the most popular characters on the SCP Wiki. Number four, the most pop, the fourth most popular character on the SCP Wiki is one that I'm actually kind of like, I find ridiculous that it's on this list and almost didn't include, but it's still technically fits my criteria 
the administrator. And you might be like, what's the problem with that? Well, the administrator in most of the stories in which he features isn't really a character. He's just like more of a force of nature than he's a character. But that's also true of the Scarlet King. But I was a little bit iffy on the Scarlet King, too. So it's like <clears throat> not and not to the level of the Scarlet King. But references to him are always like very minor and to the side. Like if he participates, it's like maybe one line here at most. Uh, there aren't articles. There are some, certainly. There aren't many articles that focus on the administrator as a character. He's always tertiary. He's always on the side. And that is just what I'm saying. Like, does that really count? Yes, it does. Uh, he features in 93 articles. So, yeah, a lot. But he's probably one of the least developed and least, like included characters in the articles in which he features but now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty number three and we know we haven't said bright we haven't said clef and we haven't said gears yet and these are really popular especially with off-site fandoms but what order are they in <clears throat> well number three is gears no yeah gears Let's double check when he was originally posted and by who I would assume gears, but I don't know. Yeah. In 2008 by Dr. Gears, he was also written by uh, Kane Pathos Crow, the author, and then gears again and so on. Uh, in recent years, he's showed up in some other articles, uh, but there's been no like strong, I, I mean, a little bit, there's no strong thread, like a particular author who's picked it up. Well, no, that's not true. Technically, it looks like Troy L. had a whole series that included him, so that's a thing. Um, Dr. Gears is a character who is very emotionally detached. The idea is that he's more robot than man, but he's not technically a robot. Um, and he features in 114 uh, articles, which, just for the record, our number 10 slot, me, or my character, Dr. Sumerian, and Datto, we're in 52, so this is already more than twice as many as the ones at the end of the list. Just to keep in that and uh, keep, kind of keep some scope in mind. Uh, <laughs> and Dr. Gears is a cold and less than uh, emotional character who acts more like a robot than a person. And that's generally his portrayal on the wiki, which gives him a nice uh, niche to fill for stories. You need a character who has no emotional reaction to something, a data android type character or a Spock, throw in a Gears. In fact, there's an, I wonder if there's an argument to be made that Clef, Gears, and uh, Bright fulfill the Kirk, Spock, and McCoy roles. Huh. I could do a whole video on that, and maybe I will. Anyway, that's it. That's number three. Now, this is the part that's going to surprise you, right? Because if you're like me, you might have considered... Dr. Bright to be the most popular character on the wiki, but he isn't. He's number two. And Dr. Bright's first article was in SCP-963, and this is another one where we'd be like, isn't he technically an SCP? Yes, but he's Dr. Bright. Calm down. <laughs> I've made an exception. Technically, he is an SCP because he, well, the character and the necklace are different things. I, I think, I think there's enough of a differentiation to make that difference. But SCP-963 is his necklace, and it's the first article featuring Dr. Bright, and it was written by, well, his character name now is Edmund Bright. It used to be Dr. Bright, then it was the Duck Man, and now it's Edmund Bright. Uh, and that's the person who originated the character. It has been written a lot by Bright, uh, and he's features, he features in everything. Oh, not everything, but he features in so many different articles. Um, a total of 157, so even even bigger jump from our last one. He features in very popular articles, like Dr. Bright is no longer allowed to use temporal anomalies in order to travel back in time so he can kill Hitler. Whoever wrote that's a, a great writer, I'm, I'm to understand. And, <laughs> and a few others. Uh, yeah, and he originated in 2008, like most of the rest of these. And he's kind of... If SCP-173 is the mascot of the SCP Foundation, I think Dr. Bright is the uh the employee the, 
I, I don't I refuse to want to call him the employee of the month, but the guy on the employee bro, employment brochure that's like, hey, work for us and look like this, and this is the guy that you could be. Um, he's the architect, archetypical doctor, the character that when you read, even <clears throat> me and even people who today are like, Doctor Bright's a terrible character, which you'll find a lot of people on the wikis think and say that. But even with those people, you're dealing with, you know, a character that so, so many other people read on the wiki and are like, I would love to have a character like that, that's that popular. Whether the quality or not is high, who, who cares? I want something that popular. And you know what? Leave people alone for wanting what they want. That's all I'm saying. But number one is Dr. Clef not much of an explanation needed for bright and clef i think we both we all know that dr bright is you know uh a, a a you know was is essentially a necklace that you put on people and then it shifts their personality but then you've got dr clef who is kind of a basic bitch uh he has 188 articles but like he's the most normal of the three I would say like Dr. Gears seems like he's the most normal because he is, you know, emotionless and just kind of does his job. Dr. Clef's just a guy. I mean, there's some, uh, in some stories, he's anomalous, uh, where it like the picture thing in some stories. And of course the fact that he's supposed to be immune to anomalies in certain other stories, but a lot of, a lot of the stories you're going to tell, he's just a dude who is good with a shotgun used to work for the GOC. That's about it. I mean, <clears throat> Ultimately, I'm surprised to find that, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be. As one of the oldest, uh, it was one of the oldest characters who is kind of basic. It makes sense that he would show up in more articles than any of the rest because he's the easiest one to use. You need a doctor who is known to be competent. You throw in Dr. Clef. And the very first article, including him, is SCP-166, which is uh, by Dr. Clef. And then the Clef Kondraki incident, which is where Clef, uh, or no, Kondraki breaks Dr. Clef's neck. And then a few other ones. Um, yeah. So that's our list. Let's uh, go over it again just to, so that we can say it out loud. So tied for number uh, number 10, Dr. Sumerian and Datto. And then nine is Fail and Wilson. And then eight is Dr. Kondraki. Seven is Dr. Light. Eight, no, six is, I can count, leave me alone, uh, Kane, Pathos, Crow, and then five is the Scarlet King, four is the Administrator, and then three, Dr. Gears, two, Dr. Bright, and one is Dr. Clef. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like me to do more, like, sort of investig or not investigations, but deep dives in, uh, maybe I could do a deep dives in on each of these characters individually their origins, uh, who's written them and, uh, like who they are as characters in general. Um, maybe that's a good, that's a good idea for some videos I could do later, but, uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell next to that. So you're notified when I upload new videos and then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level. Like everybody here on the screen already has, including we actually have a new $50 patron. And that makes me so goddamn happy. <laughs> Let me just grab it real quick here. Right. MC Kejman. Kejmal? I'll have to get that right at some point. But MC Kejmal is uh, a new $50 patron backer. After my last video where I was explaining how my patron is just dwindling to nothing, I got a couple of new patrons and it was very very nice and uh yeah it's one of those things is like uh you can feel it like it's like someone's pressing down on you slowly like more and more and more as it starts to get lower and lower and lower and you're like oh god what's gonna happen and then it's just like a like a weight off your shoulders when it starts to go back up like it's not you know it's not a complete relief everything's not everything's not fixed forever but it, it is nice to have the weight off your shoulders for a little while and uh, it's also nice to know that I'm not alone out here. I will see you all again on Tuesday.